Hello, my name is Patrick, and in this video I want to discuss um, a question I'm going to pose. Um, uh, again, you know, this is just, these are just my thoughts, and, um, you know, I could be barking up the wrong tree or whatever, but um, this is as I see it, for, as someone who recovered from POTS using the DNRS and uh, rewired my limbic system uh, using that program and recovered and, and seen other people who, who've done that, um, I'm just basing my observations on that and, and on reading um, articles on POTS and then trying to put two and two together. But anyway, my question, my question is, um, what is the real significance of there being a triggering event bef um, before the onset of POTS syndrome? Um, now this is this is an important, a very important question, and I, I believe uh, fundamentally um, that th the fact that there is a triggering event in in most cases um, is the key to understanding the the, the, the nature of the condition. Um, so this is not something that you know it's 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 actually it's well known you know. Um, so when you read about kind of overviews of Potts syndrome, um, you know. Um, this will always be mentioned that there's usually a triggering event. So, if you read, for example, on the NHS, um, you know the National Health Service uh, website in the UK, um, they will list uh, that it is that there are usually traumatic triggers for the event. Um, same with the Mayo Clinic and, and others, and patient group websites and all that. And uh, and this generally is also the general anecdotal experience you read about on the internet. Uh, not always, but it seemingly um, is the case. So you know you'll read of things like um, um, that. There's the, the traumas. You know have to be understood quite broadly. Okay. Um, so it's not. You know when we say trauma, we often think of a psychological trauma. That's our cultural uh, way of of thinking about this. But um, that's not actually the be all and end all of trauma. There are many kinds of trauma. So uh, you have to also think of physical traumas. So um, what you'll often see are things like. Um, people get POTS after having had an antecedent illness, such as a virus like uh, mononucleosis or something like uh, then Lyme disease, or you see of bacterial poisoning, um, uh, even food poisoning, salmonella poisoning, uh, and other illnesses like that. And then you'll read of cases um, where people get POTS after a difficult uh, pregnancy or a surgery. Um, and then of course there are the psychological traumas as well, or a combination. Uh, excuse me. Um, a combination of of all of the above, or or some of them uh, together, or sometimes the traumas are acute, sudden onset. Sometimes someone um, has um, lesser traumas over a longer period, each one uh, leading to uh, perhaps a heightened limbic system response, um, and then has a final trauma which tips them over. Uh, so, but basically, that's something you kind of read about, and. Um, uh, you know, read on the internet also many inspiring stories about people who who are raising awareness of POTS then it tends to be that, uh, you know, such and such uh, whoever's in the story um, was fit and healthy until they uh, contracted this virus and then they never got better um, even though the virus had finished uh, run its course but they were still very unwell and then eventually they were diagnosed with POTS that's the kind of typical sequence that you read about so um, now, uh, my kind of basic uh, suggestion is that uh, given that this is, for the most part, an observable constant, it seems, I, I, it's possible that not enough has been kind of uh, thought about in relation to why it is the case that there's always a triggering event of some kind. You know, what is it about a triggering event and all of these different, I mean, on the face of it, rather different events, you know, pregnancy, uh, versus a bacterial infection, you know, quite different. Um, you know these different kinds of uh, traumas. Like, why is it that they all lead to the same condition, right? Um, I think that's the I think that's the million dollar question. This camera has got to stop doing that. Uh, okay, I think that's the million dollar question. Is why why does why do why do, why why do so many different events lead to the same condition? Um, and I think if it, that's the question that needs to be solved. So, um, what I'm suggesting is that um, uh, the brain, the limbic system in particular, which is our protective part of the brain, fight or flight center, uh, can be affected not just by psychological traumas, but also by physical traumas. 
um, such that it really doesn't matter what the actual initial trauma is in some sense, although of course you have to treat that initial trauma on its own terms. Um, you know, if it's bacterial infection, it needs the correct medication and so on and so forth. But in terms of the after effects, um, the limbic system can enter a state of crisis kind of no matter what the initial trauma was. And this is because um, the limbic system uh, is not just affected by external events, uh, as we all know, you know, with the case of post-traumatic stress, uh, so if someone's uh, in a war zone or in a car accident or whatever, they, they, their limbic system will be adversely affected by those things and they develop a state of extreme hypervigilance and PTSD, post-traumatic stress. But it's also, and this isn't what is culturally recognised, uh, is also affected by uh, internal stressors uh, to the body. Um, so, um, you know, this is because um, there's not just a mind-body connection, but there's a body-mind connection in that the body is always sending signals to the brain as to what's happening in the body. Uh, and you'll know this right now, as you're sitting where you are, you're able to sense your body. Um, so that's not a controversial point, um, it's just a fact. And so when you have a severe, let's say an especially severe virus, um, the distress signals that will be sent up from your body to your brain, um, for whatever reason, may cause that brain that's receiving the signals, the limbic system, to tip over into a crisis state and redouble its efforts to protect you. But because the brain is a neuroplastic organ, uh, that is to say it really changes very readily in response to experience, um, it actually may then become hardwired in a state of crisis, um, which is what leads to the development of POTS. So uh, for various reasons I go into in other videos, including the hour long uh, talk on this channel. But, but basically, the key idea I'm trying to put forward is that the real significance of there being a triggering event in POTS that precedes POTS is the fact that there is a triggering event and this is very important and um, what part of us is affected most by events but the part of us which perceives events that is the limbic system in the brain um, and uh, when the limbic system is adversely affected and enters a crisis state because of the severity of the traumatic event where trauma is understood broadly, then you end up with a situation where the brain is um, is stuck in crisis and that is what leads to POTS. And I think that is, that is um, you know, the answer to the, to the question posed um, and uh, that is the real significance of there being a trauma and, and the fact also, it also explains why it doesn't in a sense matter what the initial trauma is because the effect on the brain will be roughly similar. Um, um, so it could be that someone, one person has a very, very severe psychological trauma and another person has salmonella poisoning. Um, but um, in the one case, uh, external events tip the brain into crisis and another case, internal events tip the brain into crisis. But it doesn't matter I I in some sense, um, you know, in the end, um, though of course both have to be treated um, in specific ways. But in terms of the end result, the brain has ended up in crisis. And that's the significance of traumatic triggers. Thank you.